Hi, it's Professor Cummings. I have another video for you. Uh, this is going to be uh, some example problems, but now I want to go over uh, the chain rule. Uh, I think the chain rule is one of those that is not as easy to grasp for some students, but I think like with most thing, things in calculus, uh, if you work through the problems enough time, you start to develop that intuition around them. So I wanted to do a, a video to allow some of my students to be able to uh, get used to the chain rule and be able to to get comfortable applying it. Um, so what we're going to do is I've got some problems, you know, and as the best way to handle it is just to pause the video. You know, that you'll probably get the most out of it doing it this way. Pause that video and work the problem yourself. Then restart the video and I'll work through the rest of it and show you how to basically tackle it. So with this first particular problem, you're going to do a derivative of this quantity here. So y is equal to the quantity of 3x plus 1 raised to the 7th power. So go ahead and try this on your first go on the chain rule. Remember the chain rule is the inside-outside rule. And it's a compound uh, function here. So you're going to take the, uh, the outside, leave the inside alone, and then multiply that by the derivative of the inside. So go ahead and do a pause and go ahead and try and work that problem. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this this particular problem and we're, we're going to work through it. So let's see here. So this is the equation for the chain rule. So you have, again, a function of h of x is equal to f of x of g of x. So this is a compound function. You know, it's a function within a function. And to take its derivative, you want to take f of x, leave g of x alone. The derivative of f of x, leave g of x alone. And then multiply that by the inside, g of x. So you get uh, f prime of x, g of x, times g prime of x. Now, one thing about these problems that I have found trip student up is the fact that sometimes it's a lot to keep track of, especially as the problem starts to expand and you end up with quite a few of the chain. So one thing I, I do, and you know, you as you get used to it, you'll probably won't use this tool anymore, but it's just to make a little table for yourself. Here I, I identify all my functions and their respective derivative. So here you got 3x plus 1 raised to the seventh power, that's one function. Its derivative as an exp exponential function is seven, leave the inside alone, raised to the sixth power. The next function is actually the quantity within the parentheses, which is three x plus one, and its derivative, which is just three. So now you have the functions and you have the derivatives. So now it's just a question of plugging it into this template. So f prime g of x would be this, times g of x, which would just be 3. So the derivative of y, dy over dx, is equal to f prime of x, g of x, or f prime g of x, times g prime of x. And you can simplify this to 21, you know, the quantity of 3x plus 1 raised to the 6th power. So that's that's it. That's the chain rule. So again, just keeping track of all your derivatives and also understanding, take the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, then multiply it by the derivative of the inside. And again, this is a compound function and it can go on, you know, quite a ways within. So let's try another problem. Here we have h of x is equal to the quantity of x squared plus 5x minus 6 raised to the ninth power. Go ahead and try that. Pause the video and give this one a try. And then we can you know restart it and see how you did. Again, remember the template that we use and the, you know the equation for um, the chain rule. All right. 
So let's go ahead and give this a shot. See, compare how you did. So you got the original function. And you got the template or the equation for the chain rule. So the derivative of, of h, h prime of x is equal to f prime g of x times g prime of x. So again, I use my little table. We get a handle on all the functions. Here we have the exponential function, you know, x squared plus 5x minus 6 raised to the ninth power. Then we've got what's inside the parentheses, x squared plus 5x minus 6. So this exponential function becomes 9 times, you know, leave the inside alone. So x squared plus 5x minus 6 all raised to the eighth power. This lower one, or the one inside the bracket, is going to just end up as 2x plus 5. So if we follow this template, we can call this one f prime, g of x, and this one will be g prime of x. So h prime is equal to 9 times x squared plus 5x minus 6 raised to the 8th power times a quantity of 9x plus 5. Now we can go ahead and, and I didn't do it on this one, we could distribute this as 18x plus 45 uh, if you want to simplify this a bit. But, uh, you know, the, the, you're fine there. You've done your derivative at that point. So let's try another one. Here we have y is equal to the sine of x squared minus 3x. So go ahead and pause the video. And we can move forward. You know, then when you get done, go ahead and see how you did. Okay. So again... I'll put up the equation. Now, let's again, let's identify our functions. We've got sine of the outside, sine, you know, whatever, you know, sine of some quantity. And then the inside is x squared minus 3x. So we're going to have to take the derivative of sine, leaving the inside alone, and then a derivative of the inside and multiply them together. Because again, this is another compound, for, uh, compound function. So we got our little table, you know, so the function, again, sine of x squared minus 3x, and x squared minus 3x is the inside of the function. Take the derivative, leaving the inside alone, you get cosine of the quantity of x squared minus 3x, and the derivative of the inside is just 2x minus 3. So y prime is cosine of x squared minus 3x times 2x minus 3. And let's look at one more. So this one, again, y is equal to the quantity of 1 plus the cosine of 2x. The whole thing squared. I'll go ahead and pause the video work on this one and then unpause it all right so this one is a little bit more complicated but still you know follows the same pattern as before all right we got the exponential function of x squared and we've got the inside but then we've got a third one which is the 2x so we got what's going on here oops what's going on here and what's going on from there. So when we put our table together, we have three functions we're going to worry about. We've got the exponential function, the what's going on inside the parentheses, and then we've got the argument for the cosine. The derivative on the exponential function is just going to be 2, leave the inside alone, raised to the first power. What's going on on the, the inside is now 1 goes to 0. So that is the derivative of cosine of 2x is just negative sine of 2x. And then again, on the inside of 2x, the derivative is just 2. So you can see how this looks more like a chain from the outside working all the way to the inside. So the answer is going to be the product 
of these three. So again, you've got two times the quantity of one plus the cosine of two x times uh, sine at, or excuse me, negative sine x times two x times two. We can simplify this a bit, multiply the twos together, and that negative one comes out as negative four. We end up with y prime is equal to negative four times the sine of two x times the quantity of one plus cosine of two x. So again, this is Professor Cummings. Uh, I hope this was helpful and go ahead and like the video, uh, share the video. And please, if there's any questions or any suggestions, go ahead and leave a comment and I'll you know read them all. And um, thanks for watching my video and I will talk to you soon.